Good evening, folks. Back again this evening. Talk about a little turkey hunt. This is a about a hunt that took place many years ago, back in the late late 1970s. When I went on a turkey hunt, that just about was my last hunt. Last thing you'd expect, but it just about got me. I was down in the central Piedmont, South Carolina hunting, and I set up that morning on a ridge, probably close to three quarter of a mile from the river. And uh, but it was all open all the way down to the river, as far as hills, with no hills in between me. And right at daylight, there was a gobbler. Gut, he cut loose. He was just a raising cane. And uh, you could tell he was way down on the river bottom. Now you couldn't tell which side of the river he was on, but he was on the river. And I was three quarter mile away, and I thought, well. He's not probably coming to me. I need to go to him. So I busted off the hill right at crack of daylight, and I took off down toward the bottoms. And as I got closer, he was getting louder, and he was getting bigger. Sound sounded bigger anyway. I was using a uh, Remington uh, A70 pump sh shotgun back then, and uh, used a box call, something, something like this right here, and. Uh, if you know anything about box call, you, you, you use a little chalk to get it to sound right. And um, I had that with me. I got down at the bottom, got about maybe 100 yards, 200 yards from the river, actual river bottom itself. And I set up, and he was close. He had to be right there on the river. I couldn't tell which side he was on, but he was right on the river, probably still, in a, still roosted on top, overlooking the water. So when I cut loose, he really gave me a, a fresh call, and I said, Dang, burn it. I believe he's on the other side. And uh, I talked to him a little bit, and he talked to me, and we talked back and forth. And then directly, he flew down. And uh, he was walking the bank of the river, but he wasn't coming to me. He was on the other side. And, man, he, he's the only one I had going that morning, and he sounded big. And... Uh, I tried talking to him, you know, try to call him in. I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't do it. I'm not that good a caller to start with, again, but, but still, anyway, I couldn't call him back. I said, you know, he's not leaping. He's there. He wanted me to come to him, but he's on the other side of the river. And this was the Henry River, by the way. And it was probably, I thought it was about 50 yards wide at the most right there. But uh, it had been a lot of rain. It was, you know, a good bit of uh, flow going down the river. And, um, uh, too deep to see the bottom in a horse. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to go to him. Now to get to him, I had, remember I had to call. If that call got wet, I wasn't going to be able to use it. I did have a little plastic bag that I brought with me in the middle of my chalk and everything. And I wrapped it up in it real tight and had a shotgun. Unfortunately, back then, I didn't have a sling or the shotgun. I just carried it on my shoulder or in my hands. So uh, I decided to swim, I'm gonna swim across the river. I said, well, it ain't 50 yards across. Start in one spot and you're gonna, the current's gonna carry you down river, but you'll come out 30, 40 yards on the other side and get on the other side. I said, for 30, 40 yards, after it gets too deep, I'm gonna have to swim with one arm and keep the other arm with a shotgun and the call above the water. And just swim along sideways. And I said, well, surely I can do that. So when I get over there, I'm going to be drowned. But I'm going to get this big gobbler. Then I can either walk about two or three miles around about way to a bridge and come back. Or I can swim back across the river and don't worry about getting wet. So I uh, slid in the water. And I, I didn't take two or three steps. And it was in, it, you could tell I was getting over my head. So I just went it went forward and started swimming sideways. Had that one arm up here, just keep going. The current carried me down river pretty fast. I was going to end up about 75, 80 yards down river, which is okay. I was still I was going to come out. So I'm I'm going along, going along, going along, and I guess I got about just a little bit past center of the, the river. You know, I was going to end. Now I, was going, I know I was going to come out on the other side because the current was carrying me across as I went. And I anticipating, boy, I'm going to get this big gobbler, and all of a sudden. Out of nowhere, 
I was just sucked, slapped underwater. I mean, just like a man grabbed me by the leg, just jerked me down. And I mean, when I went down, that call got wet, that gun got wet, but I got wet, really wet, because I got sucked under the river. And at the same time, I hit a brick wall. I mean, just like somebody throw me against a brick wall, body slammed me. And what had happened, now, but known to me, because the river looked beautiful there, you know, it was fast running water down through there, and it's about 50, 60 yards across. What I didn't know was a big oak had fell a couple of months earlier, whatever, on that other side, fell across into the river, and it was laying just about parallel across the river, under the river. But that tree still had the big branches and the limbs and everything on it. It caused a big hole in the river bottom there, and the current was going across it and under it. Well, when I come swimming across, that current grabbed me and sucked me down up under that tree. Well, you, if you know anything, you know if you ever drop, get sucked up in a tree full of duds and limbs and everything, and, and the river, you got a good chance you ain't coming back up. It's going to pin you up under there, and you're going to drown right there. Well, when, it, when I got sucked under, slammed real hard, what I done, I hit that trunk of that tree that was laying parallel with the river. I hit it right in the chest, bam! And my arms, gun in his hand, and his arm went free, bam, like this one way, and my legs went under the trunk. The trunk, it must, it was big. But my, from the waist down, I went under it. From the waist up, I was against it, or just barely on top of it with my head. And then I could feel that current pulling me under, sucking, pulling me down, going back up on it. And I knew when I got under there, I was going down, and I didn't have no idea how many limbs I was going to get sucked into. And the current be pushing me down there, holding me there. So I got this gun in this hand, and I'm trying to hang on to it, but this hand right here, it is gripped. I mean, I buried it right into that bark, and I'm just clawing that bark, trying to pull myself forward. And uh, I, I stopped my, my momentum from going under, and it started trying to ease up farther, farther. And I'm just holding my breath. I'm underwater. And it, you know, muddy river, you can't see. As I'm, I'm go, going, 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 and I finally get enough to where I, the current eased up on my leg. I realized I was above it on the, on the trunk. And I'm thinking, well, I'm on the trunk of a tree. Am I 10 foot underwater? 5 foot underwater? What? You know, if I get if I get sucked off the other side, I'm gone again. Well, <laughs> when I finally realized I was up on top of it. I got enough momentum up where I can get my legs up under me. I raised up, and I was probably only about 18 inches underwater. <laughs> The trunk was now it was probably in eight or nine foot of water out there but the trunk itself when i stood up on it water wasn't that deep probably under me on the trunk and this thing was wide so i here i am 50 foot out in the river 40 foot out in the river and i just turned i, I looked back to the bank and i could see the big earth ball from the trunk see where, where it actually was laying at so i just turned started easy slowly walking toward that the bottom of the tree just walked right across the river to the trunk and got off. He got out of the river. But boy, he come close to get me. And when I got there, I, boy, he was gobbling. He was still gobbling. Well, I eased far right quick and got over and got my heart back, settled down. Said, Man, that's too close. So I run up on the bank, about 50 foot, 50 yards, 50 yards probably. Sit down behind a tree, pull out my call, and I said, I had it wrapped in the bag and everything. Open that bag up, and water poured out. I said, No! All my chalk, everything was soaked and wet. I couldn't make a call. If you, I don't know, I couldn't make, I didn't have a mouth call. I couldn't make any sound. This gobbler is going crazy up and down. He's only like 60 yards out in front of me out there, walking back and forth in the bottom. And all of a sudden, I hear a hen call. And it calls, and it's, oh crap, he got, he got a flock with him. But it wasn't. He turned and goes to the hen. He, don't, he barely gets outside. Boom! Yeah, fella kills him. Another man on that side come down, heard all his toys and all the noise. He set up and he called him up and shot him. Well, I got out, walked over where the fella's at, and I knew the fella. I said, boy, he said, Don, how'd you get down here on this side of the river? I said, well, it's a long story. I said, but nice bird. He said, yeah. He said, I didn't know you was hunting him. Oh. I said, well, I didn't know you was hunting him. He said, well, he said, I'm glad I got him. I said, well, I'm glad you got it too. He said, you are? I said, yeah. He said, how you figure that? I said, well, 
Now that you got this gobbler, you're through hunting. And you can take me back to the car, because I don't want to swim that river again. <laughs> he said, swim the river? I said, I didn't get this wet standing here. He said, yeah, you are a little wet. I said, yeah, I'm real wet. So he gave me a ride back around the river, and I, I got out of there. Come close, though. You, never, you know, I never would have thought about drowning like that there, but when you get sucked down in a hole like that, you, you may not come back out of it. So that turkey hunt turned out to be a learning experience, but I, I've been back in the river since then, but I never got in a hole like that again. I look for them falling trees since then. I'm always looking to see what's coming in the river on the banks. So, in the story on this one, just want to pass it on.